I am joined by Dr. Richard Alley, Evan Pugh University Professor of Geosciences at Penn State and one of the world's foremost experts on ice sheets and climate change. With decades of research experience, including advising U.S. and international policymakers, Dr. Alley is here to discuss how science can shape inclusive, evidence-based policies and foster stronger collaboration between governments and scientific communities to address global challenges. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Alley. Oh, it's a pleasure, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing here. Of course. So first things first, I want to get your opinion on looking through the past and the evolution of science and policy. What do you think are the key lessons that we've learned from the past successes and the challenges in trying to bridge science and policy? Yeah. So science works. We have these fantastic success stories. You know as well as anyone, you know, 1900, a, a hurricane comes roaring ashore in Galveston with very little warning, and something like 9,000 people are killed. Today, we have far more people in the firing line. The warmer ocean is making the storm stronger, and far fewer people are being killed in the, the storm coming through. And why? Because science works, and it's wedded to policy that we really have good forecasts and we have the structure that can get them to people, that can allow the, the authorities to make warnings and get people out of harm's way, it works. So I'm curious now, looking to the future, where do you see the evolution of the relationship between science and policy over the next decade? Where do you see it going? I hope it just gets better and better. I think we have a task, which is that what we've just been saying here has been obvious to us, that the forecasts really do save lives. But I'm not sure that for all of these issues that we have documented that in a way that is readily accessible to the policymakers and the general public. So I think we have a task to do the science and to get the word out on the reality that the value of information from our science is way more than the cost. So in what way do you think policymakers and scientists, I guess, can build more collaborative relationships between the scientific community and governments? Yeah, this is hard. Um, if you're a policymaker, you have the world yelling at you. And if you're a public-facing policymaker, you also have the world waving a lot of money and yelling at you. And so it is, it is meeting, it is making relationships, it is moving forward together. And I think a lot of that, AGU, National Academies, um, let's get more of our members the ability to talk to the policymakers off the record, let's just sit down and have a talk. And anyone wants to call, you call up HEU, you call up the National Academies, you call up AAAS, they'll get somebody who's from your district, who knows your topic, who'll get in there and have a chat with you. Yeah, that's a big, a big part of communicating science and communicating accurate science. It's, it's such, it's so easy for the public to gain mistrust when you know, we change our answers about things. So it's, it's good for us to be prepared when it comes to that. And I think building relationships is a great point you made. And speaking of building relationships and building inclusivity in science, where do you think, or how do you think building relationships between science and policy helps to address building more inclusive science? And how do you think we can create more inclusive policies around science? So I believe I really do, that science is, is moving towards inclusivity, that, that the truth is the truth, and the learning is the learning, and that's not people that look like me, and it's not people that look like you, it's people that look like all of us, and they come from all over. So I really believe this. I really believe that the good science we do helps everyone, and it often helps those who have had the hardest time the most. I also think in the modern world, 
people are getting information from so many places that we cannot do our job unless we have such a range of voices that we can reach everyone um, at their first stop, not their last one. And I can't expect a whole lot of people to go find me <laughs> to get their information. There, we, we have to have we have communicators, to scientists who look like the whole population. And it, we are failures if we don't. I think that's a wonderful message, especially key message to end on. So thank you so much for coming and sharing all this. Well, thank you for what you're doing.